The Shredder finds his footing with a Loot Crate exclusive. This is your look at the new NECA Toys Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Loot Crate exclusive Shredder. The Shredder, now sporting blue, is based on his design as he appears in the 2012 IDW run of TMNT Color Classics. A collaboration between NECA and Loot Crate, the figure was available during a membership run where if you subscribe to the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles subscription service, Shredder was the first figure released in a four-figure run. Before we get a closer look at the Loot Crate exclusive shredder, the first thing we're going to do is calculate how tall the figure stands. And while I'm doing this, I'd like to send out a big thank you to the folks over at NECA that provided this sample that we're having a look at in this review, stopping the tape measure at the very top of Shredder's head. And looking at the readout here, you're looking at Loot Crate exclusive shredder standing 6.7 inches in height. And switching that over to centimeters, then you're looking at the figure standing 17.2, almost 17 and a half centimeters tall. Now, if you're in the market of picking up Shredder for yourself, some sad news is that you're probably going to have to start checking around to places like eBay. Shredder was available as a partnership between Loot Crate and NECA, and therefore the only way that you could actually get Shredder initially was by signing up to Loot Crate's limited run of TMNT subscription boxes. Each one of the boxes had a theme to it, and each theme came with its own exclusive figure. Uh, Crate 1 was going to be a Mirage Comics-based box, and with that came included the Mirage Shredder. Box 2 was going to be arcade-based, in which it came with the Electrified Turtle that you guys have probably seen online. Based on the design of that turtle being electrified in the original Turtles arcade game, Box 3 was going to be a cartoon-based box, in which we were going to be getting ourselves a rock steady, and that gave you three figures. But if you did subscribe to Loot Crate for all those three boxes, then there was technically a fourth figure as well, and that was the Easter Bunny-dressed Bebop. Whether NECA Toys will be re-releasing any one of those standalone, time will certainly tell. But again, if you're in the market of picking those ones up for yourself, they would have been based on signing up for the Loot Crate TMNT limited release subscription box. Now, technically, this is the second time that NECA has released this shredder with this specific mold. The first one was all done in a red outfit with still the silver armament on his body. That one was a convention exclusive that came along with the comic-themed Turtles, if anyone had the chance to pick that one up. Sadly, I wasn't able to, so I never had the chance to acquire that original Shredder. But with the blue-colored Shredder, it gives me sort of the opportunity now to be able to add this one to my collection, as it's a design I've always been a big fan of, pulling from the original Mirage comic designs. And while I don't sadly have that Shredder then to compare it to, I can most definitely compare it next to, say, the cartoon Shredder. Pulled from two different mediums, the comic in the middle, the cartoon on the left. And for some other size comparisons, while I don't necessarily, again, have the comic-themed turtles, I most definitely have the cartoon-themed turtles. And that's what he looks like just next to, say, Michelangelo. He's still about the same height as cartoon Shredder, and he's a lot taller, of course, than cartoon Michelangelo here on his right. Running through the figure's accessories, we'll first discuss his hands. Yeah, 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 I know. Not the most exciting things to talk about when it comes to accessories, but certainly we have to address these first, as he doesn't have the necessary means to hold all the other accessories, a lot cooler accessories if you ask me, until he actually has these hands in the sockets, as he's currently sporting some closed fists. I know you're probably looking at this and thinking, are those gloves he's wearing, and why would then he be having visible fingernails? Well, this is keeping in mind based on the IDW run of the colorized original black and white turtle comics in which they colorized Shredder to be blue. So while it may look like gloves, in actual fact, these are his real hands. Of course, like his arms, for example, will be all his flesh color, and so will his hands, even though, again, for this purpose, they've colored them blue. You see that he does also have these little spikes, of course, like typical Shredder fashion. These are done in a softer plastic. First of all, it's less likely to break. Second of all, you don't have to worry that it's going to be pricking your skin and drawing blood. 
So we're going to go ahead and just pop the older hands out of his sockets. He just basically has a pair of closed fists. Yeah, yeah, I know. Not the most exciting. Uh, you know certainly by now how it is to remove these hands. You're just simply going to wiggle and free the peg from the hole in the socket of his forearm. Then again, we're going to take the hand and make sure when you are putting the hands in that thumbsies go in. Thumbsies go in. That's classic. Just pop that in place. Just make sure it's all good and secure. And then do the exact same thing on this side. Wiggle and free the hand from its forearm prison. And then you're going to go ahead and just replace the hand like so. This is, of course, quite crucial because all the things that we're going to be looking at just next are all the things that he would be able to only pull off when he actually has these gripping hands in place. So the first weapon we're going to then look at for Shredder is this Kasari Gama, or Kama, depending on how you want to prefer it. I think Kama refers only just to the sickle weapon and doesn't then include the chain. I think then Kasari Gama is the inclusion of the chain that runs down to the ball bearing or the weighted bottom. This does fit into his hand. Uh, by the way, in case you're curious as well, this is plastic. Um, some believed it may have actually been metal, but it is actually, in fact, a plastic blade. Very nicely painted as well, with a running of black from end of handle to the tip of blade, with a few little notched points in there as well. You'll start seeing a lot of this nice panel lining work when it comes to the actual look at Shredder. Now, to fit this into his hand, you would suspect, of course, that it would just simply slide into his grip, and you would be absolutely correct. The problem with it, though is that it sits awfully loose. The Kasari just doesn't seem to sit tight enough in his hand, and often at times, I mean all the times really, when I am putting in Shredder's hand, it just seems to slip straight through. If not really for the sickle blade, it would fall right out most definitely and land itself onto the floor. So you can have that displayed in his hand. What you could consider doing, as I've certainly considered the idea of doing, is also heating the hand. Just put the, the weapon into his hand and then just press it shut. Get it as close of a grip as you can. And then once that cools, the plastic will have molded a little bit better around the Kasari. Then you can go ahead and take the other end of the chain. And that just sort of just, you can put it into his hand if you want to, just like that. And you can have the shredder holding that. Now that is fine and good. If you'd like to have something a little bit more fireable, if that's the case, he does also come in clue with his bow and arrow. What's neat about the bow and arrow, though, is first we've got the bow, and then we got his partner in crime, the arrow. Uh, this actually does have a stretchable, pullable cord, which is a nice touch. Like with the Kasari, you can see that there's some little notched points that they put done in black, so it does have a real Mirage vibe to it. This does have a pullback cord, like I said, it's done. The material looks like it's, it's actually elasticized threading. As you can see, there's a little bit of a wovenness to it. The difficulty, though, is while it does seem as a practical purpose a real functioning bow and arrow, it's difficult to actually have that pull off in Shredder's hands. Let me just get that one side of the bow in his hand, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So if you get this in one of his hands, obviously, it's not going to be a very tight grip to start off with. But you can technically just get his arm bent, bend his arm like so. Bring his arm back like this, and there we go. Sort of get the idea of what shooting an, an actual arrow looks like. You can pull this back. The problem with, with it, though, is it doesn't stay in place. Bring in his partner in crime, the arrow. And the arrow, as you can see, they've colored in, or once again threaded in in black, the end of the feather portion of the arrow. A nice sharp, not too sharp, but certainly get to the point, uh, I see what it did there, is all done in silver, with the majority then of the arrow done in brown. One neat thing that they did do is there's a little notched point on the end of it where, yeah, you could probably guess it, it actually fits inside the cord of the bow. And you can just fit that in place like so. And this does give you a an actual drawback feature to the bow and arrow. The problem is it doesn't stay in place. There doesn't have nearly enough of a suitable grip on Shredder's hand to properly hold the arrow in place. I think what they should have done, going back to a talking point on the hand, is they should have made a dividing line, cut actually a little ravine in between his two fingers here, where you could then take the feather 
and slide it in to in between that section right here and then he would have guaranteed been able to hold it unfortunately there's just not strong enough of a grip where he's able to then hold the bow and hold the arrow as if he's actually really firing it off one workaround I found you could do with the bow to keep it in Shredder's hand is to take one of the twist ties that comes included with the figure. They're already silver, so they actually blend well enough into Shredder's armor that you almost don't see them. This works even better if you can use those clear elastics that sometimes come included with the figures to hold those, those accessories. But what I have for the time being is I'm going to use the twist tie. Just sort of make a C shape like this, feed it through so it already catches and holds onto the thread. Then take Shredder and kind of already got it got him in a pose where it looks like he's holding the bow and the arrow ready to fire. And all I'm going to then do is I'm going to fit the thread in between Shredder's hand like this, just like that. And then once that's in place and it's not going to be going anywhere, then I'm going to go ahead and twist, twist the twist tie just like that. And now you've got the cord not going anywhere. From there, you can go ahead and just attach it into the other end of sh other hand of Shredder, fit that into his grip like that. And now you've got yourself a firing shredder. Again, it works well enough. Sort of a makeshift idea for the time being. There we go. And I know you're probably thinking it's got this excess. Well, what you can always do is just go in there with some nail clippers and just clip off the excess. As I said, because it's done in, in a same metallic color, it kind of from the side, you don't see it because it blends a bit in way with the actual spikes. and. Uh, spikes on his actual hands. So then from there, I'm just going to go ahead and take the arrow, which I've all, already got over here, just fit it on top of the bow, and then pull back it, and then just fit it into Shredder's hand. Now, again, it, it's a shame that he doesn't have the proper suitable, suitable holding grip for holding the arrow, but at the very least, just as a short-term fix, you can see he sort of can do this. Um, if I can find some clear elastics, I might actually just consider the idea of swapping out that twist tie in favor of a clear elastic but you already have those twist ties available with shredder you might as well use it so at least it looks like he can actually hold the bow and arrow a little bit better than he was before now looking at the figure itself this is the shredder of course pulled from the pages of the vintage comic run of course now colored in blue instead of his traditional black and white colors i must admit though the blue does work quite well I ever wonder if maybe down the road NECA still will entertain the idea. We've already gotten ourselves a red version of Shredder, which is basically this figure. Not as much of the dark panel lining done to his mask, his armor, to his suit. But he did still have the silver helmet, the silver shoulder guards, and the spikes on his hand. While this section here was done in a lighter red. That was the convention exclusive. The Loot Crate exclusive, of course, changes that all up and swaps in some Smurf blue instead. As for his face sculpt, you really don't see too much of this shredder. He's sort of shrouded in mystery and shadows. You still see there's detailing done to the actual areas around his eyes, even though they're all black, and from a distance you wouldn't really be able to see them. But they actually put some wrinkles there on the sides of his eyes. That's a really a nice touch. Um, I like also that the eyes sink far enough back that you really can imagine that there's shadow that would be forming there as a result of him wearing his helmet. The helmet, as I said, as for the rest of his body as well, has all this panel lining that's been done to it, where it looks like an artist would have taken a pen and scribbled in all the shading. It really is nice the way that they've done that. He has pretty much all of that running across anywhere that's silver, and to be fair, also the blue as well. The head, as to the side of the profile, still has the guard on the back there with some nice additional scratchings that they've put to the back there as well. So it makes it look old and worn. Then, of course, the main calling card of Shredder is not only just his helmet, of course. There's a lot more going on to Shredder than just that. He has the shoulder guards there as well, which each one of these spikes, as with the hands that we looked at before, these are all soft plastic and very less likely than to break. I did notice that this particular one here, I have one that looks like it's already been removed. I uh, checked in the packaging, and sure enough, I didn't see one. So unfortunately, my, my shoulder on this shredder is missing a blade on the front. As you can see, he's got it on this side. He sadly doesn't have it on this side right here. Again, 
bit of a shame there. But still, though, you're not going to see it. I certainly don't even notice it until I'm looking at it really close. From a distance, I still see that all the spikes seem present. Also, that's neat about this particular figure is if you draw like an imaginary line right up the middle, blocking the view, of course, uh, he's not symmetrical on his shadow. In fact, you could imagine then that the light source is coming in, veering down on this side here, and casting then the shadow on this side, where you have more of the shadow happening along this area. In fact, actually, I would probably say that the, the light is hitting up here, as he has more lighter areas on the back. The back of his helmet, for example, doesn't have the shadowing, and he's got the shadow here on the front. Again, the light source probably is coming back this way. I uh, do like the fact that the shoulder pads are separate pieces from his arms. How they've worked them is basically they've attached them to the top of his torso. So when it comes time to eventually move his arms back and forth, the shoulder pads are soft enough and hinged in such a way that they stay completely out of the way. As for, of course, his guards on his arms, the same idea applies. Some nice dark black panel lining done here, scratched on the one side, scribbled in by pen, and more darker here on the outside. This, these are the areas that I really like because you're still seeing those silver of those spikes sticking through. They're not affected at all by the shadowing. So it's really a nice two-tone effect of having the darker areas and then the lighter colors of the silver spikes sticking their way through. The cool thing about the shred head here is the fact that he does look like he was pulled from the comic pages of the old vintage Turtles run. Right down to the fact of all those details look like they're crude, and I don't mean to say that in a negative way at all. In fact, it actually kind of looks like some inker late at night would have been dipping his pen into the well and then just drawing these in himself. Some of it is a little bit more darker than others, sort of the same way as his shoulder pads are darker where the light isn't hitting it as much. He has that same thing happening around the belt or sashed area of his, of his outfit here. You can see here he's got more dark areas with only just a little bit of blue peeking in. It sort of reverses itself a bit from the coloring up here where the blue is the main color and then the black only serves as the shadow. Really, again, it's a nice breakup of the way that they've done that, as again, with the light hitting at a certain angle. Of course, there are going to be areas on Shredder that are a little lighter, and some areas that are going to be a little bit more darker. It literally looks like he was pulled from the comics, the way that you see all these little lines and panel lines and shadowing. All the back section of Shredder, for example, is primarily all black. In a way, he sort of also reminds me of the old vintage toy lines that used to come out like back in the day, the old toy biz stuff. I don't know why I get that vibe when I'm looking at this, but it does remind me like the old vintage toy biz days of collecting the old superhero figures. A continuation again of that blue all the way down. One of the only things about this particular shredder is because he is colored in a different color way with the blue instead of any bit of flesh tone is that he is a lot of blue. And in some ways, the black has helped to break that up so that you're not literally just looking at a head-to-toe shredder with a few little elements done here in silver. Moving a little bit further down the figure, of course, we have our shin guards done. And happy to report there's nothing that's been missing here on the shin guards. All of them are in place and still done in the same soft plastic as both the hands and the shoulder guards as well. Looking at the back, you have some additional detail where the boots he, he of course, is wearing. I must admit, I also... Pretty happy to see that this guy has as much articulation as he does, right down to the fact that he has foot and toe articulation. That was certainly something I wasn't expecting at all. Speaking of the figure's articulation, speaking of the figure's posability, Shredder's head rotates all the way around. There's really nothing preventing you from rotating it. There's no obstructions. There's nothing in the way of it. He has a good amount of articulation and posability happening in the head here, even to the point where you can rock it back and forth. I like that as well. The hands rotate all the way around. Now, the thing you want to be careful when you are rotating the arms, even though there is a little bit of luxury provided by the shoulder pads, you still want to be careful that they don't get snagged on there, as they are probably only attached by that little thin strip of plastic. If you are rotating the arms all the way around, just be careful you don't catch that. I mean, naturally, anyways, the shredder wouldn't be able to rotate his arm all the way around anyways. So the fact that the figure wouldn't really be able to pull that off is not something that's disappointing anyways. But the arm does rotate back and forth. We're just going to skip the step of actually rotating all the way around, just in case I do some damage there to the shoulder pads. He does have a swivel at the bicep section. 
Shredder also does have a double hinge on the elbow. You can see a hinge there and a hinge right there. And whatever hands you decide to display him with, the hands rotate all the way around with a hinge happening back and forth. The waist swivels. He doesn't have an articulation in a, like a ball joint articulation point here. It's basically just a straight swivel back and forth. The legs split out. As you can probably see, the lower part of his tunic, this is a softer rubbery plastic as well. And because it's split on the side too, it means that when you move the legs out like this, they open up and kind of lay the way for these legs to actually be able to hinge out properly and they don't get restricted. The legs go forward and back, no problems at all. They swivel at the top cut of the thigh, double hinge happening on the knee. And then Shredder has articulation both in the foot. You can rock the ankle back and forth this way. And the Shredder also has toe articulation as well. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, he has toe articulation. Not to mention a nice schnazzy pair of peg holes on the undersides of his feet. So if you want to have Shredder in a more dynamic pose, you can most definitely pull that off with such a neat looking Shredder, a Loot Crate exclusive presented to us from the folks over at NECA Toys. Straight out packaging, we have ourselves one slick looking shredder for fans that enjoyed the original black and white run of the Turtle Brother Quartet or enjoyed the colorized or slightly colorized version that IDW released years later that this shredder shares the same color scheme too. You'll definitely want to be adding this one to your own personal display. But that being said, getting this guy out of the packaging, he does have some difficulty holding his accessories. Because he is using the same mold as the one that NECA released previously as a a convention exclusive, which I also want to mention, I think in the review I may have said he come packaged along with the other Turtle Brothers from the comic series run, but in actual fact he came packaged with other foot soldiers, all sort of sharing the same color scheme of the red and the gray. But because he's using the same mold, the hands are probably haven't been changed at all, and unfortunately the accessories that come included with this specific shredder, like the Kasari Gama for example, he just doesn't have the easiest of times holding in his hands. A lot of times the comma just slides straight through his hands, unless you have it just on the end of the handle, kind of like what I've got here in Final Looks. For his bow and his arrow, it's a nice touch to see they include that, but he doesn't really have the proper interchangeable hand, where I wish he could have included a a swappable hand that would have had a dividing gap in between his middle fingers, enough for him to hold the arrow firmly in his grip. A workaround that I showed you in this review is just using one of the twist ties. They're available anyways, they come included with the figure, just to kind of attach that to his wrist to kind of keep the thread still firmly in his one hand, and then you can hold the other end of the bow in the, in the other. Kind of, again, a workaround until for maybe I'll find myself like a clear elastic and I'll maybe use that instead, but at least the silver twist tie has sort of the same color scheme as the rest of his armor that it does a somewhat good job of blending in. Love the color deco on this particular shredder. Up to this point, we've gotten ourselves the original red and gray shredder. That was the convention exclusive that came included with the foot soldiers. And now we have the loot crate version of shredder that's basically the same shredder just done in blue and silver. Of course, the question I would ask is if NECA ever plans the idea of giving us just a straight up black and white version of Shredder. We already got it, black and white versions of the Turtles. I would love to see black and white versions of Shredder or black and white version of Shredder to go along with that. Now, this one was a Loot Crate exclusive. In other words, how you were able to get this figure initially, that you had to sign up for the new TMNT limited run of subscription boxes that Loot Crate was putting out. They had put out three boxes, each with a different theme. This was the Mirage version of Shredder or the comic theme Shredder. There was an arcade version that came included with the Electrified Turtle. And then there was a cartoon run box that came included with what I believe to be is a Rocksteady. If you manage to get all three of those boxes and agree to sign up with all three in mind, you would also be then getting the fourth exclusive to Loot Crate uh, figure, which would be the Easter Bunny Bebop. And I'm hoping along the ways, somehow, NECA will be able to re-release those figures in one way, shape, or form. Either way, though, let me know down below in the comment section if you've subscribed to the Loot Crate and planning on getting these figures, if you've already managed to pick up the Mirage or IDW Shredder, let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think of them. A big thank you again to the folks over at NECA Toys that provided the sample that we had a look at in this review. If you enjoy the content you're seeing and haven't yet done so, consider the idea of subscribing to this channel. We have regular videos Monday to Friday at 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and there's always new content popping up. 
Also consider the idea of turning the bell notification on if you've already subscribed so that when you are subscribed and you hit the bell notification, you'll get those friendly little reminders of when new videos are popping up onto this channel. But just again, an FYI to mark down in your Trapper Keeper. Does anybody still use Trapper Keepers? I don't think so. Just remember, Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when you'll see new videos popping up on this channel. Uh, also, just an FYI. Also, I'm throwing a lot of FYIs out in the end of here in Final Looks. But FYI, there's a whole bunch of NECA reviews, specifically TMNT figure reviews, coming up in the pipeline. So keep your peepers peeled to this channel. As always, guys, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.